Well, well, welcome to part three. How about a little exercise that combines all of the techniques that were presented here in the last chapters? And even better, we get another appearance of the guy with markers. Isn't that great? Well, no, but the budget was tight and we couldn't afford any cool people. But tracking is still good though at the end. All right, let's go straight to tracking. The task here is to track this hat. More specifically, the back corner of it. So, let's find a frame where this corner is sharp and entirely visible. Always start with an easy frame which works best as reference. We will track the beginning and the end of this exercise. Oh, the tracking box gets too close to the edge. So let's set valid to always, but as well move the tracking box a bit down. Sometimes all you need is modifying the tracking box and create new keyframes. That definitely helps the tracking engine in such situations where the pattern changes that much. The point infos are definitely annoying in this situation and we really don't need to see its name all the time anyway. But here it's not visible anymore. The pattern is distorted too much, so end the point and go straight to the next frame where it can be seen clearly. The tracking process indicates that reference scaling might be an issue. At least the pattern is scaling way more than it should, so deactivate scale reference pattern. Well, better. Not great, not terrible. It's definitely on the right way, just slips away towards the end. So how about adjusting the tracking curve with deform track? Buffer track, then place it correctly on the last keyframe. Then create another key at frame 84 without modifying it. Otherwise all frames before 84 would be modified as well. Much great, no terrible now. Track the remaining frames until end. Should be easy as pie. Okay, now back to the gap. Quite a simple procedure. Track the closest marker on the head. This marker has a similar movement on screen than our feature. Then insert this marker's tracking curve into point 0.01. Nice. Last, a bit fine tuning with deform track. Finally, back to the beginning. And switch direction to backward. Then just drag all the frames. Awesome! 
in just a few steps, we got a solid 2D track from a quite difficult feature. That's it, mates. Oh yeah, we learned a lot about the ever been and always be crowned discipline in match moving, 2D tracking. It's never enough to emphasize how important a good 2D tracking is and that all calculations after it are based on it. No lens and camera can be solved well if there are bad 2D tracks in the scene. Good tracking knowledge starts with the importance of tracking flat surfaces and well-defined tracking box sizes for the individual scenarios. We've seen how parameters like direction, deep tracking, defining reference patterns and their ability to rotate and translate affects tracking quality. Further, stay aware about tools like Overlay Grid, Deform Track, Insert Track Aligned to Key, Match Point to Other Stereo Camera or the Nudge Tool, as well as techniques like Offset Tracking. All these tools are listed in the description as well, so this video can be a compendium in case you like to look up a specific tool or technique. So, thanks and bye. It was an honor. See you soon.